Well, in the linear regression model, the coefficient of determination R square is the center measure of fit. And uh, there's no clear choice for models with, with categorical outcomes. Okay, so for linear model, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear, okay, R square. In categorical and limited response variable models, there's no clear choice. And people have proposed a battery, you know, a variety of, of R squares. And those R squares are called pseudo R squares. And that's the reason why, you know, the, the title of this slide is called pseudo R squares. And no one measure is clearly superior and none has the advantages of a clear interpretation in terms of explained variation. So in linear regression models, so R square, let's say equal to 0.8, right? We're gonna say, well, 80% of variation in the response, right? The continuous dependent variable is explained by uh, the explanatory variables or covariates, right? In categorical and limited response variable models. That's not the case. And also the Bayesian measures, AIC and BIC, which are useful for comparing non-nest models. So LR test can only be used for uh, nest models. Walt and the score, uh, you know, they don't have to be used for nesting models only. AIC and BIC, they, they can be used for nested, both nested and non-nested models. They're becoming, you know, more and more popular. So let's quickly talk about R square in a uh, linear regression model. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, there are many fit measures for nonlinear models. Okay, they're designed uh, to, let's say, uh, be the analog of R squares in the linear regression model. Let's say, let the st structural model be this one. Okay, y equal to beta zero, beta one, x one plus beta two, x two plus beta three, x three, plus an error term. And expected value is this one. That is after we estimate a model, right? We have, an, you know, uh, the estimated beta zero, estimated beta one, beta two, and beta three, right? And x are observed, so they're fixed. And each of the following definitions of R square gives the same numerical value. So, you know, you know, the R square, you know, can be uh, calculated in different ways. So we can either use the explained variation like that, a ratio of variation Y to variation of the predicted Y or the transformed, you know, LR uh, test that is one minus, okay? So here you can see that, but it's L of M, alpha over one minus, so L M beta. That is the intercept only model, the uh, likelihood and the phone model. And then you raise the power of two over N. So all these um, actually measures, they're equivalent in linear regression model, okay? How about how about pseudo R squares? Pseudo R squares. So first measure is to kind of mimic the percent of explained variation. So let's say for binary regression, uh, in binary regression models, let's say for binary outcomes, let's define uh, Y hat, that is expected Y to be the predicted probability, predicted probability, right? Although we, we observe either one or zero, but, but after we estimate the model, we can calculate the predicted probability for y equal to one and y equal to zero, right? Then we have a R square Afron, or Afron's R square is calculated like that. That's one minus the ratio of what? ratio of residual sum of square, analog of a uh, linear model, right? And what? The total, total. So this one is for every single case, we're gonna calculate the pretty probability, right? This is observed, yi is either zero or one. 
then uh, minus uh, minus uh, uh, the predicted, right? Square that and sum across all cases. And what's in the denominator is yi that is observed, either one or zero, minus the expected value of y. Basically, average across all this one and zero, the proportion of ones, okay? Square that difference, sum across all cases. Okay, we got a ratio. Then one minus that one, so it's called r square f one. Also, we have a uh, what's called likelihood ratio index, uh, pseudo r square. And a lot of times it's called McFadden's pseudo r square. It's calculated like that. That is one minus the ratio of log likelihood of model, the unconstrained model, okay, over the log likelihood of intercept only model. So take a ratio. Then one minus that, okay? So we get uh, McFadden's R squared. Also, we can have McFadden's adjusted R squared, uh, taking into account of number of parameters. So we just, uh, in the numerator, we minus number of parameters uh, just to penalize that, okay? And also, uh, for models defined in terms of Y star equal to X beta plus epsilon, that is, you know, if we, uh, buy into the latent variable approach, right? We have a latent variable Y star. Then, uh, Mac uh, excuse me, McKelvey and uh, Zavonis, you know, uh, R square, right? Uh, that is the ratio of variation Y star and uh, and uh, uh, the variance of uh, Y star hat. Okay, so. Basically, is uh, explained variation in uh, y over total, right? Over total, okay, which can be decomposed in this two uh, in, in, into this ratio, right? The total is equal to actually uh, from the expected, right? Plus from the variation, uh, variation from expected y star and the variation from uh, epsilon, this error term. And where the y star hat can be estimated as this one, as this one, okay? This is called MZ, right? Uh, R squared, pseudo R squared. Um, uh, McKelvey and uh, Zavo uh, Zavoina R squared. And also we can have Cox and Snell uh, pseudo R squared, okay? So Cox and Snell adopted a transformation of the likelihood ratio to create an R square. So it is equal to, sometimes it's called R square ML, the sub-index is equal to one minus a ratio of to a likelihood. And in the numerator is uh, the likelihood for the intercept only model. And in the denominator is likelihood for the full model. Then it's on the, the ratio gonna be raised to the power of two over N. Then one minus that. And uh, if the LR car, uh, chi square G square uh, is equal to this one, define this one, then this one is equivalent to that one. Uh, here it's just a you know, pretty simple, well, not very simple, not that straightforward forward algebraic derivation, but you can try that out, okay? These two, they're equivalent, okay? So this is called, you know, Cox and Snell, uh, uh, pseudo R square. And also we can have Craig and uh, Euler R square, which is a, you know, kind of uh, uh, revision of Cox and Snell, uh, pseudo R square. And uh, so here is, is L, you know, M uh, alpha is the likelihood for the, you know, intercept only model. And this one is likelihood for, for the full model. Okay, and this one again is the likelihood for the uh, intercept only model. Okay, and now let, let me talk about, uh, you know, uh, count R square. So, so the general category is, is called pseudo R square comparing observed and predict values. So people say, well, um, you know, I, I'm not interested. I'm not that interested in likelihood. Okay, I'm interested in, you know, how well we predict uh, the outcomes. And I wanna use uh, some information from 
uh, the accuracy level of our prediction, the predictive power as a measure. Okay, so let's say um, let the observed y equal uh, zero or one. Okay, then we can have a pretty good probability for y equal to one, right? And then we can define the expected outcome of uh, y hat as zero if the predicted probability smaller equal to 0.5. So cutoff point is 0.5. And people say, why we pick 0.5? Because that's reasonable. It's a little bit arbitrary and subjective. And we can pick another one, but this is probably the most reasonable one. And y hat, the predicted y hat equal to one. If, you know, the predicted probability is greater than 0.5. And what we can do is we can uh, create a table. So here is observed, right? Y equal to one and Y equal to zero. Okay, then here is Y hat equal to one, Y hat equal to zero. And people say, you know, uh, how to get Y hat equal to one and Y hat equal to zero. And we use this standard here. And then we can figure out, right? This is observed, this is predicted. So how many actually is in this cell? How many in that cell? And what is the total? So N11 basically, you know, in the cell uh, 11, right? Is total number of cases predicted correctly for Y equal to one. And N22 is, you know, in the cell 22 is number of correct, correctly predicted, uh, you know, cases for Y equal to zero. And the other two cells, you know, N21 and 12, they're just incorrect. And total number of cases is N. Of course, we have marginals, right? We have marginals here. And then based on this table, okay, we can create a count R square. So count R square is basically the proportion of correct predictions. So we add up together all the number of cases, frequencies in cell one one. That is the correct prediction for y equal to one. And n to two, that is the correct prediction for y equal to zero. Okay, then we divide that by n, total number of cases, we get count r squared. The higher the number is, well, the better uh, the predicted power that we have. But people say, well, well, here is a caveat. That is without knowledge about independent variables. You know, I can simply count, you know, uh, the proportion of y equal to one and proportion y equal to zero. Then what I'm going to do is, regardless of you know uh, whatever uh, random case you pick out, I'm going to bet on the category that has um, uh, you know a uh, high number of frequencies, right? So that's the problem. That's the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a just count r square. So that's how we're going to do it. Okay. And uh, what's adjusted? Uh, basically is, um, yeah, I believe we have, you know, um, uh, have a typo here, but, uh, yeah, but basically, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, again, add up, you know, cell one, one and cell two, two, then we're going to, you know, subtract, subtract, uh, the number of cases uh, for the category that dominates the frequency distribution, okay? Dominate the frequency distribution. And we're gonna do the same for the denominator, N minus F. Then pe people say, well, you know, we made a, you know, adjustment and we can take care of the issue that I just talked about. Because I just took out uh, the category was, you know, the largest number of, the highest number of, of uh, observations in that category. Okay, in that category. Uh, okay, and, uh, um, okay, uh, so that's called uh, adjusted count R squared. And let's move on. 